now that you mention uh, intention doubting the intention i can see the problem uh, that the problem is there with my spouse my spouse is doubting my intention so now how should i go about it see the basic issue is that you know in most of the cases when we see problem in relationship the problem starts with this doubting the intention and when you start doubting the intention instead of having a feeling of relationship you have a feeling of opposition and with that feeling of opposition when you start observing things you know you see start observing them in a very different manner then they are really happening so when we come to know about this difference between the intention and competence right we generally feel that yes this is the problem that we are doubting the intention you know and because we are doubting the intention we are you know not able to evaluate the competence properly most of the time we misinterpret that competence but interesting thing is that when you come to know about it you don't realize that the problem is also with you you start thinking that the problem is with the other person so the problem is with your spouse right <laughs> so i remember a similar thing happened you know i think kanpur we had we were having one of such workshops and one of the professor you know his wife is also a professor there and uh, she has been uh, you know associated with this and she has been pursuing him to attend this workshop and then after a lot of persuasion he came you know and he was attending the workshop and fourth day when we were talking about this uh, you know relationship and the feeling of trust and we we're discussing about this trust on intention and trust on competence he was quite happy and, you know and he came out with this expression that you know now i understand what is the problem you know in our relationship and he said the problem is that my wife doubts my intention so this is how we think that even when we realize that this problem is because of doubt on intention we don't start with looking at ourselves that we are doubting the intention of the other we start with this that you know the other is doubting my intention so what i would say is that now you can see the difference between the trust on intention right and the competence so let us start with having trust on intention you know with our spouse right and then the whole process will start but i am not doubting um, the intention my spouse is doubting my intention so what shall i do now that he or she will do because uh, as long as she can understand this difference and unless she has you know uh, kind of decided that he or she has decided to work on this right he will continue to have doubt on intention of mine so what do i do so i understand this difference and when i find that he is doubting my intention this is the matter of his competence if he had the competence if he had the understanding <laughs> then he would not have doubted my intention mm. okay and he would have worked with his own competence and my competence so he would have helped me to you know improve mm. the fact that he is doubting my intention is a problem of his intention or problem of his competence his competence his competence 
So at least I must be clear, you know, and I should not start having doubt on his intention. Mm. So I will have trust on his intention. And I can evaluate that he this problem is because of his competence. Therefore, I will do, do two things. One is that I will keep my intention clear, you know, that yes, this person has a good intention, but he is lacking competence. So I must help him to improve his competence. But in order to do that, first I have to make sure that my feeling and my behavior with the other is fulfilling for him or her. Now, if I can do this second thing, then this will give him assurance over a period of time that we have discussed. You know? mm -hmm. That when I begin with this working on my competence, begin with having this right feeling and then for right expression of the feeling, then because this feeling is naturally acceptable, the other will feel comfortable with it. Right. The other will feel comfortable and will start, you know, having that acceptance for relationship. So that is how things will start to work. Mm -hmm. So I remember this particular case that I was discussing, you know, that over a period, it did make a difference. <laughs> so it will make difference. If I am you know, having this right feeling and I am behaving properly, then things will improve. At least the things will not get, you know, deteriorated. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was uh, my next question that Suppose, okay, I have the right intention. I really do want to improve the other person's competence. I can see that he's lacking in competence. But now when I'm trying to improve his competence, he's not listening. Now what do I do? How many times, how long will I keep trying to make the other person improve the competence? Because supposing he doesn't really want to improve, what can I do? Yeah, there are two possibilities. Number one, which I just talked about, you know, that uh, you work on yourself, you um, improve your own feeling and your expression of this feeling, what we call as behavior. Then it will create a space in the other and is likely to, you know, start paying attention to you and, you know, he will be willing to listen you know, because the dialogue will be there. So this is one possibility. And I think this is a major possibility which we have to work on. The second possibility is that the other person has a very strong sanskar, you know, very strong negative sanskar. And it may go on for a long time. Yes, it is possible. So if that happens, but I'm saying that the first possibility that I talked about is what we have to start working on. And most of the time it will work. Hmm. Most of the time it will work. But in some cases where the preconditioning of the person is very strong, you know, and it is something which is also very dominant in the society. So he or she keeps getting a lot of input from the environment, right, in favor of what he or she is doing, then it take a longer time. Mm -hmm. And what I would say that sometime if you think that there has to be a tough decision to be taken, right, you do take a tough decision, tough decision in the sense you know, doing something to draw the attention of the other. But do that with a feeling of affection. Do that with a feeling of affection. You know, I was taking this example last time. 
that this mother, when the mother sees that the child is going to put it, you know, its hand in the fire, then she will hold him by force. So that <laughs> holding hand by force is with a feeling of affection. So that is important, I would say. <laughs> that is that feeling of affection is there and the feeling of care is there. And I am holding someone you know, with that toughness. The, the chances of breaking down this relationship is not there. So that we should try in extreme cases. In extreme cases, we try that, but try that, you know, tough kind of behavior to draw the attention of the other with a feeling of affection, with a feeling of relationship. So I have to be responsive to this and not reacting to this. The problem is that most of the time we end up ourselves becoming reactive. Mm. So that we have to really take care of. So what I'm understanding from this is regardless of how the other behaves, I still have to be responsible. Yes. 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 I mean, that's the only way. If I want to improve upon the relationship and not deteriorate this relationship, right? Somebody has to take the lead. Somebody has to take the lead. And what we are saying is that, you know, let us take the lead. That is the best way because the other person has not even started, you know, paying attention to it mm. and realizing that there is problem because of this doubt on intention. We have at least taken the lead. Now we understand where is the problem and also we can see where, you know, what is the possible solution. So we start working on it. Yes, that's the only way to start. And when the other person becomes sensitive, you know, then we can have a dialogue. And when we have a dialogue, then we can, you know, help this process of exploration is starting the other person also. It's also mentioned that uh, this will not work unless the other is assured in the relationship. What does that mean? Yeah, that is what I was explaining. That unless my behavior, my feelings are in place and my behavior is proper, right? The other person will not feel assured of my, you know, acceptance of relationship and my behavior. Okay. So what is happening most many of the time, you know, you can see that somebody is being misbehaved, right? And this man is complaining about this misbehavior. But if you look at this overall, in between this person also keeps reacting. Right? Now, the first person who has been misbehaving first, you know, if you talk to him, he will describe about the misbehavior of this person. So he has every time complain about this misbehavior of this second person, right, who is misbehaving once in a while, reacting once in a while. But he seems to be justified. And that's how he's justifying himself. So this relationship between, you know, the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law, or even husband and wife, many times this is what is happening. That this wife 
is being misbehaved by the husband but or the daughter in law is misbehaved by the father mother in law but many times this daughter in law is reacting you know so this mother in law is murmuring something and then in between you know this daughter in law will make a very you know hurting comment and that puts fire in the you know mother in law and then she will start shouting and all these kind of things so you look if you look at that this is what is happening so if we are not putting you know kind of uh, air to this fire by reacting then uh, the chances are that it will you know slowly settle down but we also keep reacting so i'm saying that at least we don't react from outside this we are sure then not only not react but respond so if you do that things will improve and of course it can take time i mean that's what i'm saying that you know this some scars are so deep rooted and particularly when you have those some bad some scars or bad preconditioning which are prevalent in the society so you think that everybody is doing that so i am justified so unless he enters into this process of self exploration and he finds that you know this is not right and it is because it is not naturally acceptable to me it will be difficult for him to even think of you know making effort to get out of it mm. that is why we are saying you know that yes we have to work with individuals but then we have to work with the mainstream education and then ultimately work with the whole society because everywhere the right kind of environment has to be there otherwise you know working with the individual only it be a much difficult task sir i mean you can see the difference if the whole family goes through this process of self exploration things improve much faster mm -hmm. right if it is brought in the mainstream education the children can pick it up immediately you know and over 10 years you can see the difference mm -hmm. and if you can bring it to the people in general to the community then it will work much faster <sighs> so that is our that is why our emphasis is that okay start with the teachers take to the mainstream education start with the children then start with the parents you know of the children so we can reach to the individuals we can reach to the system of education we can reach to the parents the society you know people in the society so that is what we need to do and some universities have uh, already started trying this you know i was mentioning about this btu this uh bikaner technical university in rajasthan so they started with the teachers few teachers then they said we should get 100% teachers oriented in this then they are also working with the staff then they started with the students and when they were having this online workshop with the students they found that many of the parents are also attending the session and there was demand from these parents that it should be done for them also so they are having this uh workshop for the parents and now they have come up with this idea that they will uh, every college engineering college under their university will adopt one good school okay in their city and we will start working with this uh, you know secondary school uh, children so they will take up at least one school and start working orienting the teachers and then conducting the class for the students so like that we can go to a wider and wider environment if that happens then things will work faster 
otherwise you know we have to keep working with the individual sanskar and which might be getting enforced by the environment yes because what i see i mean from what you're saying if somebody is shouting at me then if i am shouting back that's a reaction so i shouldn't shout back but i should uh, try to have this feeling of affection for them so that would be response so um uh, you know you almost feel compelled to shout back when somebody is shouting at you it's like uh, you don't seem to have a choice in the matter yeah i can speak in a loud voice to draw the attention of the other but what is important is to look within and find out whether i am reacting or responding at that time whether i have a feeling of affection or feeling of opposition that is <coughs> important hmm. so i am saying that one can hold the hand of the other person by force right but when you are holding his hand what is your feeling that is important that is what we are saying i am i doing it with reaction or with response so one way could be that if the other person is shouting it is not urgent that i have to immediately shout i can let it subside and when he is comfortable right then i then i will ask this question you know that what do you think you know your behavior was proper your feeling was proper were you comfortable within or uncomfortable within yes <coughs> i remember one of the participants shared his experience that one day his boss called him and shouted at him you know, for 45 minutes and then he asked him to go so before going he just asked him sir are you comfortable now and then he got angry that the boss shouted at him for another 15 minutes right. then the association was over then he called him after some time and he said what were you saying at that time so he, this fellow said that uh, you know i was just asking that you know you have shouted at me for 45 minutes and after that are you comfortable or during that where are you comfortable so he said no i was not comfortable right and from that day onwards the behavior of this boss okay, changed significantly so whenever he has to consult someone you know for some thing in the department he would call this man and he said that this is the problem how do you go about it you know so it it makes difference you know that if i am responding and not reacting number one things will not go bad number two things may improve could you Even just explain not... this this uh, uh, if you could just explain this response and reaction in some more detail so that we can understand it better yeah which is this is very important to understand because most of the time we ending up we are and we end up reacting rather than responding you know and mm. that always keeps increasing the problem <laughs> so this is a chart you know which uh, is making a comparative study of what is response and what is reaction so i will read it out and explain so when you are responding you decide your feeling on your own right on the basis of your own you know self verification on the basis of your own natural acceptance 
So I know that feeling of affection is what is naturally acceptable to me, not the feeling of opposition. Therefore, I have this feeling of affection in regard of how the other person is behaving. So the first thing is in response that my feeling is decided by myself on the basis of my own natural acceptance, right? on the basis of my own in, you know, understanding based on this self-verification. In case of reaction, you decide your feeling based on the behavior of the other. That is the difference, number one. So if you look into the detail of this, in case of response, you can see that it is based on right understanding. You always have the right feeling. It is definite and it is unconditional. So I understand that the feeling of affection is what is naturally acceptable to me in the relationship. Therefore, I have this feeling of affection always. So it is definite and it is unconditional. Now, if you look at the behavior of the other, the behavior of the other is only an indicator of the state of the other. Right. And with that input, you are able to decide how to express your feeling, which is definite, right? So what will be your behavior to ensure mutual happiness? So if the mother is shouting at the child, the child should be able to understand that mother is shouting at me, not because she wants to hurt me, but because she is disturbed. She has some problem. Right? Mm. So what do I do now? Do I think of shouting back or do I think of giving some you know, comfort to the other? Mm. So I'll continue to have that feeling of affection. And when I see that the other person is shouting, I can understand that she has problem, problem. is un uncomfortable within. So I will think in terms of giving some comfort to the other rather than shouting back. But when you are in the reaction mode, your feeling depends upon whether you like or dislike the behavior of the other. Oh. So if the other behaves properly, you have a right feeling and may behave properly. If the other behaves you have a wrong feeling and you also start misbehaving. So that is how things start getting worse. Mm -hmm. And outcome, if you see, you decide your own behavior, you are self-organized. In case of reaction, you can see your remote control is with the other and you are enslaved. <laughs> So if somebody says that, oh, you are such a great person, you know, and you become happy, right? Then he says, but what you do is wrong, and you become unhappy, right? <laughs> so that's how you are enslaved. You are in a state of patantrata, not in a state of satantrata. So with response, you are in a state of satantrata. With reaction, you are in a state of patantrata. Somebody else has your remote control. So he presses one button and you become happy. And he presses another button and you become, become unhappy. Right? Mm. That is how it goes. And ultimately, if you see that your conduct is definite when you are responding. And your conduct is indefinite when you are reacting. Mm. So you might do anything. You might even break your TVs. That's what people do when they, their country lose the game, they break the TV. <laughs> it is a definite conduct or indefinite conduct? <laughs> indefinite. Yes. If there is less salt in the food, you throw the plate. That is the reaction. Yes. If there is less salt, the response would be that put some more salt and that's it so simple <laughs> but we make it so complicated you know so you throw the plate you shout at the wife and the wife gets very unhappy about it and she is now disturbed and when the child comes back from the school she will slap the child on 
for any region, for no region. So that will go on multiplying. Hmm. Yes. Thank you. That really clarifies it. Now we just have to work with it <laughs> in the relationships. True. Yeah.